Rivet Crew, happy Wednesday. Uh, I got a little workout for you today called Loch Ness Monster. Uh, pretty simple stuff. We have a set of 50 wall balls, then we have a set of 50 box jumps, then we have a second and final set of 50 wall balls. 50, 50, 50, easy to remember. But as you can see, there's a little something else in there. There's some deadlifts at the beginning of every minute, starting uh, at the three, two, one, go, doing five unbroken deadlifts. RX weight today, 225, 155. This should be a kind of a moderate, slightly heavy kind of weight. But the main thing we want today is to go five unbroken every single round, right? So beginning of every minute, you're gonna grab that bar, you're gonna do five unbroken deadlifts, put the bar down, and then move on to either the wall balls or the box jumps. So three, two, one, go, five deadlifts, go start working on those wall balls, right? In the beginning of the second minute, um, stop your wall balls, go back to your deadlifts, do your five deadlifts, go back to your wall balls, just pick up right where you left off. A um, lot of transitions in today's workout, so set yourself up in such a way that, you know, the wall ball's right there, the box is right there, the bar is right there, so we can have relatively quick transitions between the different stations. Um, don't forget where you are on the wall balls or the box jumps. I know that's what got me last week is I do my wall balls, back to my deadlift, go back to my wall balls, I'm like, wait, what rep was I on? So make a mental note, you know, of where you are. The uh, deadlift ideally really shouldn't take more than like, you know, maybe 20 seconds or so at the most. So bang those out. Um, something to think about today is the uh, is the just go mentality, right? I know I've spoken about this before. Um, with a lot of transitions like this in a workout, it's easy to do one thing and then make the transition to the next thing and then just kind of stand there and uh, kind of catch your breath before getting started. Try not to do that today. So, you know, transition from your deadlift Get right on your ball balls. I do immediately get get a few reps in, um, then maybe take a quick break, and then get a few more reps in. You surprisingly get you know through your reps a lot faster that way. If you just get started on the next movement, bang a few out, then rest. Then mentally, it's like okay, I already done a few, and I'll just keep on going. Um, the wall balls, ideally inside each minute, you should be doing like one or maybe two sets. So either going unbroken or like I said, getting right on it, taking a quick break finishing up the minute. Box jumps, as always, more of a steady pace movement. Find that steady pace, and these are box jumps today. So you're jumping up on top of the box, you are standing to full extension, and then stepping or jumping back down again, right? So don't forget, you're staying on one side of the box, and then standing to full hip extension uh, at the top. And then deadlift should be unbroken. Um, so there you go, there you have it. Um, let's see, so things to think about today, let's think about the feet. Feet are oh so important. I love to talk about the feet. I think people forget about what their feet are doing. Um, so both the wall balls and the deadlifts, um, something that's very handy here, is to actually kind of create uh, external rotation torque, it's called. Doesn't really matter. Think about it as creating tension between the hips or in the hips and in the knees by screwing the feet into the floor, right? Kind of set those feet. Um, deadlifts, of course, are right about hip width apart. Wall ball is going to be about shoulder width apart. But think about that whole foot being firmly planted into the floor and then just getting a little bit of a kind of like twist, a little kind of screw that feet in the ground. You should immediately feel your knees drive out a little bit. There should be tension in the quads, the knees, and the hips. And this just puts everything into a better position, better pushing position. Because um, you, of course, the deadlift is a push, right? It's a lower body push. Same thing with the wall ball, that squat at the bottom. Um, so screw those feet in the ground, create some uh, tension and torque through the hips and knees, and also stability in the feet. And then, uh, of course, box jumps. Let's focus on the feet again. When we jump, ideally that whole foot is driving into the floor, not just the toes. That whole foot is on the floor. And same thing when we land. When we land on top of the box, full foot, heels down, right? So the whole foot landing is very important with a box jump. We don't want to land on the edge of the box. The, Heels trailing off, kind of aim more towards the center of the box. We land nice and whole footed, flat footed, and we stand on top, step back down, and repeat. So pay attention to what those feet are doing in the warm up today, and hopefully that'll transition over to the workout as well. And then, real quick, your extra credit today. I got some split barbell squats for you. If you've never tried, tried these before, they are they're challenging. Um, don't load, uh, try these out with a lighter weight first before you load the bar. I don't want you to go super heavy today. This should be like a medium weight. You should be able to do the nine reps on each side in an unbroken fashion without too much of a struggle. But like I said, the end of this before, is it's the one challenging movement. So you're going to put the bar in the rack and set it up just like you would for a back squat. 
So you're going to unwrap the bar, exactly as you would into a back squat, step away from the rack, and then get into a uh, split position, right? Ideally, that front chin is vertical, your back heel is up. This is kind of like a split jerk or a lunge. And then staying up nice and tall, standing up nice and tall, barbell right there. We're just going to drop that back knee to the floor and stand. You'll notice I have space between my feet from side to side for stability. This really helps. But yeah, just drop that back knee to the ground and stand. This front leg does not have to be totally straight. Just kind of pull that knee back so the leg is straightish. You don't have to lock that front knee out. I think it's actually better not to, but just kind of bring it back to it's almost straight and stand. So you're going to do nine on that side, switch legs, do nine on the other. And then you'll go to the ring and you'll do max unbroken uh, strict ring dips. Unimodification uh, or scaling if you need to, like the toenail spot or maybe a band. And this is not for time, so do nine on the right, nine on the left, max ring dips, strict ring dips, and proceed. So there you go. Quick explanation of your extra credit. All right. Get out for you guys. Have a good workout. Talk to you tomorrow.